Welcome to People Love Process. In this movie, we're going to create the artwork needed to produce an animated GIF image, and we'll do that using an extension for Adobe Illustrator available through the Creative Cloud app. And as you'll see, the process is pretty easy and intuitive. But before we dive into that, I'm gonna first show you a quick time lapse building the artwork we'll use for one of the animated GIFs. Now, this will go pretty quick, but I hope you enjoy it. Now, I really wish I could go that fast in real life. The closest I get to that is after I have a vanilla latte. But now we want to take this art we've created and we want to create an animated GIF. Now, animated GIFs aren't super complex, um, but they usually involve using Photoshop. And even if you're creating graphics in Illustrator, um, it could be somewhat laborious to set that up in Photoshop and somebody's gone ahead and created an extension to do just that. And that's what I want to show you here. Now, there's a couple ways you can get access to that extension. You can go online and visit Adobe Exchange and you can search for GIF Studio there. This is the name of the extension for Adobe Illustrator. So that's one way. I think the easiest way is through the Creative Cloud app itself. Just open Open up Creative Cloud, go to Stock and Market, and then the category subcategory would be Plugins. Search for GIF Studio, and you can find it there to download and install it. Now, in the exercise files for this course, I have a couple links. One is from the developer himself, and it's about how to use the app, and he created a YouTube uh, movie you can check out there. Also, if you're having issues with in, in installing it, there's a link I included in there where you can download a free resource to install it for you, and that that's the way I did it because it works really easy, and I'm not going to bother to go through that. It's pretty pretty easy to um, access that, download it, and install it. So uh, that's what you'll want to do. Now I want to show you how to put this extension to use. So let's go ahead and jump over to this file. Here's the same artwork we, cre we created, and I've added these pulsating lines going around it. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out because I have multiple artboards here. And the way this extension works is it considers each artboard, and on here, if we go to the artboards panel, you can see we have eight artboards. It considers each of these eight artboards, and it will go in order from artboard one through artboard eight, and then because it's an animated GIF, it's gonna loop. It'll start back with one again. So I've set up each of my artboards the way I want the animation to work. So you see I have these pulsating lines here. They're radiating out from the center. Then they get a little bigger and they're moving away from the character, a little bigger yet, moving further away from the character. And notice they're going from opaque and getting a little more uh, transparent as they get bigger and move away. That way it'll give that illusion that it's moving off and fading out. And also on its eyes, Notice his eyes start small, and by the time it gets to where the pulse is almost all faded out, his eyes are really big, so his eyes are pulsating. And if you look at my layers, I have the big eyes right there. It's almost like he's blinking at you. 
Here's the the small eyes up here on the top uh, artboard number one, so on and so forth. So I organize my content by layers over here, primary layers. Um, I never deal with sub layers. I actually, you can see there is no ability to go into sub layers. That's because I toggle it off. It's the scary basement of uh, vector artwork. And if you organize your primary layers, you never have to go into sub layers. It's just a hot mess when you get into there. I know engineers like it, but designers really don't need it. If you organize primary layers, you never have to touch them. Um, so you can see the pulse. I have number one here. Some of these use the same one since the animation kind of is pulsing outwards and using the same ones to make it pulse inwards. And this is how I structured each and every uh, one of these. And so now this is what the extension is going to do. It's going to take each artboard and it will become a frame, in this case, eight frames of an animated GIF. So to access the extension, we're just going to go to Windows. We're going to go Extensions. You can see GIF Studio. So I'll open it. It'll bring up this window. It kind of explains. And by the way, I should point out, you don't have to have a file open like I'm showing you with these eight artboards. You could just open up Illustrator, pull down Windows to Extension, and then you could open up your document from within this extension too. So just based off of how you want to work, you could do that as well. But the icons here, this first one represents importing all your artboards into GIF Studio, and then you can compose them and even move them around if you want to. Now, I try to organize uh, my animated GIFs via my artboards in my native AI file, um, and if I make any changes, I'm going to make them there first, then bring them into GIF Studio because I like kind of staggering, uh, kind of a systematic process. I don't like just kind of haphazardly moving stuff around. I always like being able to go back to a source file. Uh, setup frames, this is the order and duration, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, this one is to press play, obviously, and to see a preview of your animation before you actually create the resource. Because an animated GIF is a raster-based pixel image, and that's what it's going to create with your vector art. Although, I'm going to show you another one where it doesn't all have to be vector. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, uh, creative liberty within this process. So the first one, we're going to import all of our artboards by clicking this icon down here. So it's going to take all eight artboards, and um, it might take a little bit based off of um, how complex your art is. So you can see all eight artboards are loaded here. Underneath each one is the time. So right now, this is set for one second. That's what the S stands for. You can uh, put this at any level by using the the toggle arrow keys here, or you can double click in here and change it. Maybe you wanted it half a second, you could do that. Or if in this case, I've kind of figured out how my animation is going to be uh, working based off of my artboards already. So I can click the first one, hold shift down, click the last one. All of them are selected. Double click into the first one here. And I'm going to change this in the first, I'm going to try like a fourth of a second, then hit. It changes all of them all at one time. Now I can hit the preview to see what that looks like. And you can see how it's working. It's working the way I want. It's just going a little slower than I want. So uh, we're going to go back, click the wrench, and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, select all of them. And I'm just going to change this to uh, one-tenth of a second. So that's going to make it go a bit faster. We can preview it, and boom. You can see how it works. And I think that looks great. That's going to work great. So now it's that simple. So to get the final animated GIF, we're just going to click on export here. It'll ask you where you want to save it. You can name it. In this case, we're using the name of the file itself. So it's going to be chuff.gif. And we'll just go ahead and save it into the project folder for this project. And I'll click save. And it's that simple. That's all it takes. Now, I'm going to address this coming up because this can play a part if you want to use it. Um, in this case, I'm not using it. So we're going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to move to another file because right now I have this set up for 1,500 by 1,500 uh, pixels. 
that's a pretty big gift, but I'm doing that because I want to post these on Instagram. Uh, but let's go to another one. Also, it just makes it easier to show you um, in a movie when they're a little bigger because a GIF most of the time is pretty small. So uh, it gets lossy since it's 72 DPI. So you just have to always keep that in mind. But here's one, let's say it's for a coffee company and they want a banner on their website or a banner they can use on Facebook and um, or maybe just a post and it's an animated GIF. Well, once again, I only have four artboards here and I've associated in the previous one, I should go back to this, notice I have the pulses going off of the artboard. Now, you don't want your artboard so close that it might overlap with another artboard, then it really becomes a pain to manage. Uh, artboards are great, when, uh, but they're, they're a little wonky, you know? I wish they had the preview icon on the artboard panel as well, because at times I just want to turn off an artboard and uh, just see certain things at certain times, but it's not. So you can bleed off and all it's gonna pay attention to is the document size. So that's okay to do. I forgot to mention that. I just wanted to point that out. Or you can build it so it's all trimmed to the size of the document itself being uh, the size of the final um, uh, GIF image itself. And on this one, the only thing I have changing is I have this uh, beanhead retro kind of guy with uh, uh, coffee bean eyes. I have it tilting to one side, then it goes straight, then it tilts to the right side, then it goes back straight, and then it's gonna hit this again. So his head is just gonna be constantly rocking back and forth. And then the only other change is the color on the type is changing. So that'll have a flashing type of effect. So pretty simple once again, but that's what animated GIFs are. So let's go ahead and open up the extension again like this, and we'll go ahead and import these artboards. And I should point out on this one, the coffee bean head guy, that's a bitmap TIFF placed that I just half toned in Photoshop, placed into Illustrator and colored it. Uh, once again, I've stated this in previous movies, a bitmap TIFF by default is transparent and by default will just be generic black and you can color that TIFF image anything you want in Illustrator. Um, it worked that way in, in Macromedia Freehand when I used that program for 15 years. So I've been doing it for quite a long time now. Uh, once again, we're gonna go ahead and select the first and last, and I'm gonna adjust the, the timing on this. Obviously we don't want it uh, one second, so I'm gonna go 0.5 like that, and we'll go ahead and preview that. That's not bad. Once again, I think it's going just a little bit slow. So let's go back and adjust our timing on this. I think it, it's, it's not bad, but I think if we go ahead and knock off three tenths, so everything's just point 0.2 and we preview it, I think that looks a lot better. And once again, that's as easy as it goes. And again, all you'd have to do is export it out and save it wherever you want to go. So that would be this one. In this case, it's using vectors, which make up the type and the background imagery. But I'm also using bitmap TIFF images, and it's super easy to compose in Illustrator. So it's kind of cool. There's a lot of things you can experiment with and try uh, with this extension and this process. Let's go to the last one. Uh, this is some artwork I created a couple years ago called Diversity. I did some art prints uh, with these. These were a lot of fun. And this is ultimately what led me to do Modern Culture, which is a little more um, complex, but still kind of iconic. And this was a lot of fun. So all I wanted to do on this is we're not so much doing movement all that's changing from one artboard, whether it's the first artboard, second, or third, is the color of the characters. And so those keep changing and it keeps looping and they're always changing. So it's working off of the concept of diversity. So let's go ahead and go to Window, go to Extension, open up GIF Studio, import these artboards like this. And all we're gonna do is select all of them and I think we can cut this in half. I don't want it to flash super fast like that. And we can preview it. And that looks really nice. And that's all it takes to create these animated GIFs. 
using Adobe Illustrator, using vector art, but the more you experiment, there's a lot you can do with this. Once I tried this and I, I worked in a, a bitmap TIFF, I'm going, ooh, I could do some pretty cool stuff with this. So I plan on experimenting with it more. So if you see anything moving uh, on my Instagram account, I'm probably using uh, this extension to do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and move to the desktop because I want to show you what it looks like um, so we're in Safari now, and you can see one of the animated GIFs that I export out, uh, this chuffed one. Uh, by the way, that terminology comes from my friends who are based in the UK. It's a slang term over there that I really like. Uh, so uh, this is my chuffed animated GIF. I think that's pretty fun. Let's take a look at the beanhead coffee. I think that works pretty good. Once again, these are absurdly larger than they need to be, but um, that's just so you can see them. And then diversity. So um, I'd like to thank a French developer who created this extension by the name of uh, Loc Agon. I hope I pronounced your name uh, correctly. Uh, he was gracious to share his extension with me early on to let me give it a try. Uh, the exercise files, once again, contain the final GIF images and more information about this extension, um, how to specifically install it on your machine. Make sure you check that link out because it makes it super easy. And I hope you take it and you experiment with it and see what you can come up with because that's the best way to discover new ways to work. Um, if you like this movie, please consider sharing a link to my YouTube channel through your social media account. I'd really appreciate that as always. And thank you again for everyone who has liked and subscribed my channel. Uh, that's just overwhelming. We just passed 6,000 uh, active subscribers, so I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for watching People of Process. And as always, I hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.